Hello cave dwellers and welcome to day five of RMC Stuff Week. No, I haven't been burgled and had my table stolen because the burglars decided there was nothing else worth stealing. I've cleared everything out the way for my own safety because today we're playing with this. It's an HTC Vive. Yes, I've got virtual reality. And the first thing I'm gonna try with it is a piece of software we visited last July. That software was called New Retro Arcade Neon, a 3D front end for visiting all your favorite arcades and consoles with what tried to be the most authentic experience possible, recreating those neon lights and sticky arcade carpets. So just how much better can it be with virtual reality? Well, let's find out today. This episode is supported by MonsterJoysticks.com. Level up your Raspberry Pi with our all-in-one arcade kit using genuine Sanwar arcade parts. And OneClickPrint.com for your photos on canvas, acrylic, gifts and more local craftsmen and global delivery. So I may have arrived a little bit late to the party with VR, but hey, retro gamers do things at their own pace, right? And in my defense, I did try virtuality way back in the early 90s when VR tried to go mainstream the first time around, but I'm certainly hoping for a better experience than that. Let's dive straight into it then, and I'm using the same pre-configured arcade pack as in my previous video for a direct comparison. All the links are in the description, and you can also create your own arcade using the built-in designer. Now the thing I immediately noticed, of course, this being VR, and that's very hard to display on a 2D video, is the stereoscopic nature of the image. This being VR, my eyeballs are coerced into seeing depth, and boy does it make a difference. Every single object is worth exploring, from the pizza to the Coke cans, Every tiny detail and all of the reflections just make them look so real. So real you just want to throw them about and see what damage they can do. Not much as it happens, but it's good fun trying. But the added depth does make it a whole different world to the one I reviewed before. Even the cement in brick walls is incredible to look at, as the Unreal Engine, bump mapping and a whole host of visual effects all come together in ways that just kind of pass you by in 2D. I think we take a lot for granted, until you put a VR headset on. Now watching this bag, what does make me laugh is how long it actually took me to try any of the video games whatsoever. The front end is just so much fun to explore in its own right. And yes, there's an element of me trying out the Vive for only the second time, as I tried it briefly at an expo once before, and just fooling around really. You can navigate by walking around within your VR space, sliding around with a controller which makes you feel very sick very quickly, or jumping from point to point, which is what you'll see me doing throughout the video. When I jump into the arcade space itself, again, more and more details stand out that I didn't see before. The watermarks on the floor catching the light, or the texture of the materials on the bar stools. It's, the minute details really are stunning, and they continue to surprise me throughout the whole experience. And of course, you can now hear those attract sounds all around us from the games wanting to be played. Cuba here seems as good a place as any to start, so let's give that a try. The emulator kicks in, MAME in this instance, and you drop in some credits and get playing while the machines around you continue to play their attract sounds and catch your attention out the corner of your eye. Now I'm playing using the Vive controllers, which are okay for casual gaming, but a lot of people do like to use this with a wireless Xbox controller in their pocket, or even a USB arcade stick. The emulators can all be configured to suit you, so maybe if you have a stool and a table with that on in front of you, you can get a slightly better experience. But for a casual game, I was absolutely fine with the Steam controllers. Now with the extra immersion that the whole VR experience bought me, something stood out and that was the lack of other people around me playing on the machines. I'd love to see 15 other people here playing the machines, although you would likely have beer bottles flying at you the whole time. And as it happens, multiplayer options do allow for up to six friends to share the same arcade space as you, but that's all you'll be doing, sharing the space, as I understand it. It, it doesn't integrate any multiplayer functionality from the emulators, and you can't even stand over their shoulder and watch someone playing. You just get a holding card on the screen that they're using, which is a shame, even if you couldn't play with them, it would be fun to watch them. Back to the single player gaming experience and Cubert was great, as was a bit of the Simpsons arcade, 
which is flanked by Final Fight and X-Men. And then there's all the other fun to be had. How about a game of skee-ball? Very badly. Bowling? Not so badly actually, and a whole lot better than Wii Sports, that's for sure. Basketball? With a robot? Sorry little buddy, he didn't deserve that. And Basher Dinosaur. It's a lot of fun just walking around this place and picking up stuff and seeing what happens. Sure we did that with our keyboard and mouse before, but click left button to release bowling ball, that's nowhere near as fun as throwing it down the alley yourself. And I also managed to get myself accidentally on top of some of the machines, which is definitely not a place I've explored in a real arcade before. Anyway, you get the idea, I spent an hour today just fooling around in my virtual arcade, playing Robocop, Double Dragon, Paperboy pretty badly, although I never was any good at that one in the arcade, or any arcade machines with handlebars for that matter. And my own game of Barman. Here's your drink buddy, don't spill it on the machines. So would you use this setup as a hardcore retro gamer? Well let's be honest, probably not. You're not going to get every pixel perfect jump time to perfection through VR goggles using Vive controllers, but it's not about that. I think it's about wrapping all those games into the wider experience this offers. And with VR it's not quite right to call it a front end because it doesn't vanish once you're in the game. In many ways it is the game, and the emulated classics you choose to load up inside it simply complement it. My only problem with it now is just that I want more. I want fully integrated multiplayer, voice chat, a bigger space for the arcades. And maybe someday we'll get that either from developer Digital Cyber Cherries or someone else who carries the concept forward. But until then, I'm glad that I chose this as the first thing I tried on my Vive. And if you're fortunate enough to have a VR setup and a passion for retro gaming or skee-ball, then give it a go. Well that concludes RMC Stuff Week. I hope you enjoyed the five short videos this week covering all those things that I promised to get back to or just wanted to show you. Things like Next on the 486 and of course our VR experience today. Normal service will resume now and maybe in six or twelve months we'll have more loose ends to tie up and we'll have another Stuff Week. Until then, Thank you for watching and take care.